Good afternoon, everyone. Um, as Mark said, my name is Aman Buller. I'm the CIO for Los Angeles County Registrar Recorder County Clerk. I know that's a, that's a big name. Registrar Recorder County Clerk is one of the departments of LA County. And part of what we do is we conduct elections. We provide election services to the constituents of Los Angeles County. So the voting system that Mark was mentioning, I'm going to show you a video that'll, that'll lay some foundation of what are we talking about. That'll give you some context uh, because there's a lot that has gone into this project. So let me play the video. It's not too long, uh, hopefully, um, and followed by a presentation and then we can have a good healthy conversation. There you go. Welcome. We're excited to share our experience and journey of revamping voting experience for the residents of Los Angeles County with you today. My name is Amon Buller and I'm the Chief Information Officer of Los Angeles County Registrar Recorder County Clerk. And I'm Abigail Calderon and today we're going to discuss our journey of rolling out the voting solutions for all people. The Voting Solutions for All People, or VSAP, is a revolutionary project that changed the way of voting forever. I'm here in the VSAP Operations Center, or VOC, where much of the magic of election preparation happens. This warehouse prepares and holds over 150,000 devices and equipment that are deployed all around the county of Los Angeles in support of an election. As part of the implementation of VSAP model, Several fundamental changes were implemented to the way voting was conducted. Part of these changes include the creation of vote centers, which allowed voters to vote at any location throughout the county and replace the assigned pre one day voting was also extended to 10 days prior to the election day to provide voters the flexibility to vote on their own terms. In support of these new fundamental changes, the devices housed here in this warehouse were acquired. Ballot marking devices were custom built by the county to replace the old punch paper ballot system with the new standalone and digital system. These devices enabled users all around the county to cast their votes in up to 19 different languages as well as accommodated voters with accessibility challenges. Additionally, voters were provided the ability to pre-select their voting options in the comfort of their own home and preload those selections onto any ballot marking device to cast their vote through the interactive sample ballot. Paper rosters were replaced by electronic poll pads, or e-poll books, that allowed voters to vote in any voting location due to real-time access of voter information. These are just some of the amazing technologies housed here in the VOC warehouse and launched as part of the VSAP implementation. There are additional operations in support of VSAP program that are outside of the VOC warehouse. These include operations such as Tally, which created a secure air-gapped network facility to tabulate the voted ballots with new high-speed scanners and a new vote-by-mail facility, which processes millions of incoming mail-in ballots before sending the Tally facility for processing. As you can see, there are many components and operations that went into making the VSAP implementation a success. The video we are about to show you provides a wonderful overview of the entire project, the systems, and the work that went into making this project successful. This will help provide some context for the presentations that will be presented later on today. We hope you enjoy.
historically voting systems have been designed around the regulatory requirements, what the law says about how to deliver elections, but no one had really stopped and looked at voting systems, the actual equipment, the ballot design, and, and everything around that from the perspective of the voter. What does the voter think? So VSAP flipped that on edge and said, let's start with that. For 35 years, voters in LA County used the Votomatic punch card system. In 2003, the stylus was replaced with felt tip pens and ink a vote with how we elected presidents and school boards and decided over 450 propositions. But with every election cycle, it became clear that voting technology had fallen out of step with voters' needs. You know, in every election, um, you know something's going to happen, you just don't know why. Charles Stewart is the co-director of the Caltech MIT Voting Technology Project and provided his expertise to Los Angeles County during the earliest stages of the VSAP initiative. You have to be agile to this environment. Um, because there's new ways either to screw up or there's new ways for people to cast doubt on the, on the outcome. Research has shown that people care a great deal about elections. They are passionate about candidates and issues on the ballot. But at each step of the process, they are asking themselves, is it worth the effort? Deciding who and what to vote for is just the first hurdle. How and where to vote adds even more obstacles. Where this started was a desire to create a voting experience, so something more than just technology and systems, but a voting experience that has the ability to measure up to the significance of voting, um, the, the, the fact that in the act of voting that, that we're doing something very individualized, but it has a cumulative impact. You know, at the end of the day, we're all voters, and we all face the same challenges, time, education, access. We all just want to be able to know where we can vote, have it be a place where we feel safe and we can get to relatively quick. And when we walk out, we feel like we trusted the process and we know that our vote has been cast. The process to design a new voting system began with the open design search. It cast a wide net and collected input from a broad range of experts, designers, and the general public. So where do we stand today? This is our latest prototype. This is a more sophisticated prototype. It's not fully functional, but it is something that we can take out to voters, walk them through what that voting experience would look like. We started by really getting to know the voters, the various interest groups, the people who had you know, ideas about what, what Los Angeles needed for voting, and then use that to develop a set of principles. I mean, we built this slowly and carefully in a way that so few projects have the luxury of doing, and so few project leaders have the, the patience to do. Thanks for coming to vote today. There is a touch screen in front of you okay. and a paper tray to the right. Your ballot is now loading. The interesting thing about the project, of course, I don't live inside Dean's head, but I know at the beginning Dean was very interested in the user experience. We literally had people in our first forum when we started this project who I would say we're pretty uh, active critics of our operation and critics of the systems that were previously used for voting. We wanted them at the table. IDEO is a global design company based in the Silicon Valley. It was hired as a design partner to work with the registrar's office and the stakeholders advisory committees to design the concept, look, and feel of this voting system, a modular system that could adapt over time. Dean is taking a major risk, and the risk isn't like that he's doing something wild and dangerous. The risk is that he's doing something radical to improve a fundamental part of our democratic system. But no one else wants to do that, and especially a system as large as Los Angeles County. Excuse me. Do you have ink of vote? If you think about designing for equity in voting, so you think about starting with the people who have been most underserved by the process. Voted. Designing for the voter experience or the customer experience is actually bringing somebody in who has those needs and having them interact with the equipment and realizing that it doesn't matter if it's the right height, if it doesn't feel comfortable for that person, or if it doesn't give them the sense of privacy or the independence that it gives any other voter. Our number one goal is a private and independent voting experience. They like when it says the thing about customize. Right. I couldn't reach that selection. 
as the voting rights advocate for Disability Rights California, Gabe Taylor brought a needed perspective to the BSAF project. He remembers an early brainstorming session at IDEO. You know, people would be chiming in with the idea of like, you know, I would want um, greater sensitivity on the touch screen. I would want larger keys on the keypad. I would want, and as people would suggest different ideas, someone from the IDEO team would just be popping up Okay, so we seem to have some technical difficulty, but but we can actually go to the presentation. And uh, so the video that I was showing you, it actually showed you uh, the journey of how we created, LA County created a voting system of our own. It took us some time because of the design elements. We were very deliberate, and we wanted to have a design that was inclusive of everyone. And the forefront of our design was the voter, the eventual and the most important user of the system. So um, again, when we talk of VSAP, voting solutions of, for all people, it's not necessarily one system. It's actually a group of systems or programs or processes that we created. The first one that we create uh, that I want to highlight is a modern tally system. So once the ballots are casted, how do we tabulate those ballots? With the LA County's population, I think our bigger challenge was um, how do we create a tally system that's accurate and fast? As you can imagine, um, it's the election day and 8 p.m. Everybody wants to know the immediate trends. Everyone wants to know who's winning or losing. So we had to create a new modern tally system. Uh, another cool thing that we implemented is uh, something called interactive sample ballot. And I'm going to show you some, some uh, images of interactive sample ballot. Um, the voters of LA County, you, uh, and I don't know how many of you are voters of LA County, but you're supposed to get a sample ballot. Sample ballot is nothing but it has more information about the candidates, the contests, the measures, the propositions, uh, for and against all the arguments, so that you can, in your own time, you can study those and make up your mind. We digitized that. We made a public-facing web application called Interactive Sample Ballot. A person would be able to see their contests in the ease of their own home. Another. Um, the forefront of this was ballot marking device. In fact, we have a ballot marking device here today. Uh, we have a few individuals from our staff. So if you have any questions, you want to see it, you want to experience the voting experience yourself, it's uh, downstairs. We will be happy to take you there and uh, show you the ballot marking device. We created it ourselves, including the, the design as well as the manufacturer. Another big concept was early voting. Um, the voting is really not no longer limited to a random Tuesday that someone decides. In LA County, we give you options to vote 11 days before that, what is known as official election day. So that was a new concept. Vote centers was another new concept that was introduced. So no longer you have to go to your neighborhood precinct to cast your ballot. You could go to any of the vote centers in LA County and you could vote, you could cast your vote. In order to do that, um, of course, we had to implement electronic poll books. And then we also redesigned our vote by mail ballot. As you know, uh, voters have their own choice, whether they want to vote in person or vote by mail. By default, we send vote by mail to all the voters of LA County. And electronic poll books. I just mentioned that uh, in order for us to 
to do the early voting as well as vote centers, we had to implement something called electronic poll book. That way, people can verify your voter registration status and check you in, and you could vote. Now, when we talk of the open source component, there are several things that we intend to make open source. Of course, the software design document, which is the foundation, we want to make it open source. BMD, or the ballot marking device, and the associated software. There's a management software behind it that allows us to control those devices. Um, that's part of the open source strategy. Interactive sample ballot, which is a web application, so that is definitely in the purview of open source. Ballot layout, that's another application, again, for internal purposes, how do we lay out the ballot? So there's an application that we've created ourselves. Tally system, uh, tally is the tabulation system. And the way we've, we've created it is, now LA County may have resources uh, to have those high-speed scanners. Those tend to be expensive. If a jurisdiction wants to use cheaper scanners, cheaper hardware, they should be able to use the same system. So it's hardware agnostic. And then there's a cool, cool uh, technology that we've developed, Enterprise Signing Authority, that allows all these systems to handshake with each other and talk to each other. Remember, most, most of these systems are air-gapped and in isolated networks. Uh, so we need some way to authenticate traveling between various systems is authentic or not. Just a little bit history. Um, I don't know if you guys remember, but uh, we used to have ballots that looked mm -hmm. like this, something like a, a high school test. And it was pretty cumbersome for people to, to vote. Even for vote by mail, they had to match their candidates against the actual ballot that they used to mark. Believe it or not, about three years ago, we were still using this technology. This is 1960s technology. Very confusing, and, and frankly speaking, the ballots also had limitations. Right now, um, the most recent election that we had, we had about 42 or so contests with hundreds, uh, if not thousands, of uh, candidates. With this system, there were physical limitations on how many contests can we have in an election. And here comes the ballot marking device. This is the new marking, uh, ballot marking device that we've created. It allows uh, people to have a great voter experience. It has a touch screen. It started as a concept back in 2007, 2008. By 2016, we had developed the specifications. And in 2018, we started manufacturing these devices. So we contracted with a contract manufacturer to create these devices, this hardware, and the associated software as per our specifications. 2019, we had a mock election, and 2020 was the big day. Uh, which coincided with the presidential primary election in March 2020. This is a touch screen. In fact, I would, I would encourage you to go there and, and see it for yourself. The actual ballot is still a paper. It actually prints a ballot, and that is the official ballot that gets tabulated. So we're not talking of electronic voting here because State of California does not allow us to do that. Um, interactive sample ballot, this is a web application, and the goals were primarily to digitize the paper sample ballot that you receive in the mail. Now, once we digitized it, we also came up with an idea that how about we can expedite the experience of people who have actually studied the ballot themselves or studied the pros and cons and they have made up their mind who are they going to vote. So we came up with something called poll pass. These are just screens of interactive sample ballot. At the end of interactive sample ballot, it gives you a QR code that has your selections. The QR code can be downloaded, take a picture, printed, go to a vote center, 
scan it in a, in a BMD and it pre-populates, it does not cast, it pre-populates your selection. Kind of a speeding up of voting experience. Imagine if there are 25 different contests and every voter starts reviewing and making their mind at the vote center. That's going to slow down things. In LA County, with about 6 million voters, that can be pretty daunting task. So we have to keep in mind our operational nuances as well. So interactive sample ballot and the poll pass is one way to speed up the ballot. Absolutely. We captured that data. Uh, the question was about uh, do we have any statistics about the poll pass or how many people use it? The answer is yes. We have all that data. How many people? Now, one thing to keep in mind is that by design, we do not capture voter information. We don't want to capture any voter information. So we don't know, need to know uh, who the voter is and what choices have they made. So it's by design a disjointed process. And we can talk about it uh, a little later as well. Another cool application that we've developed is the ballot layout application. We worked with Secretary of State. We worked with the legal team, the design team. We went out in the community. We asked them how would they want to see their uh, vote by mail ballot. And of course, we have to work with a ballot printer, you know, somebody who can, who can print these at a mass scale. So we work with certain elements are given on the screen. Um, every contest or every election will have a specific color that's assigned by the Secretary of State. By the way, in California, Secretary of State is the regulatory and the, uh, and the authority over elections. So we have to follow their guidelines. The layout, we made it more dynamic so that it's up to us if we want to add some instructions for the voters because these will keep changing. And of course, we added customization. We could add pictures. We could add our own text. And then this was all uh, done with MarkSense technology so that uh, there are some registration marks so that we can, the system can read. For many, many, many years, uh, this is actually one of the pictures of our old system. These are uh, IBM cards, card readers. Uh, they're pretty fast, but at the same time, it's, it's, it's a primitive technology. It was based on Microsoft DOS. Literally three years ago, we were running our elections and tabulating elections on Microsoft DOS. In 2020, we changed all that. We used to have about 40 ballot readers. Um, and the vision was, how do we change that? We wanted to create a modern interface for the operators as well as for the administrators. And we wanted the ballot to be full-faced, front and back. These old antiquated readers could only read one side. And then we also wanted some way to track the ballot. Uh, especially uh, when it comes to recounts, especially when it comes to auditability, we want to be able to know where is this ballot. Remember, in all this, there's no voter information. Voter, voter's job is once they come to a vote center, they check in. That's it. After that, whatever happens, it's, a, it's an anonymous ballot. We, we don't have any idea to, to match them. Another cool thing that we did was uh, ballot viewer. And this is where we got some ideas from other companies that have uh, multiple millions of transactions happening. So we used Kubernetes, Docker, CentOS. Uh, we created a ballot viewer that will give us all the information about the ballot. It also has an image of the ballot and what system has incorporated. We also added annotations so that we know exactly where um, system has identified the marks. What is the threshold? Is system confident enough? In fact, we've been doing auditing after every election since 2020. The system has actually performed 100% accurately. 100% every election. 
So our confidence has gone up uh, drastically as well. Thank you. Just a glimpse of LA County. We had to come up with new facilities, new operational flows. We created a new facility in Downey. Uh, there's a designated area where media and public observers can come in and watch our process. We deliberately made it uh, transparent because we want people to watch us. We want people to, to see what is being done. And we also added monitors so that the operators of tally system, whatever they see, the public can see. We also stream it online so that there's a full public transparency. And we've seen transparency always triggers public trust. People start trusting the system if we are fully transparent. COVID was a great opportunity for us to stream uh, live because if people couldn't come in, um, in our building, they would watch it from their home. These are the scanners. Um, the scanners, uh, certain salient features are scanners can scan front and back. 500,000 ballots in a regular shift, shift of eight hours. Uh, we have multiple, I mean, I would say about 40 staff working in one shift. Uh, there are document details that are, that are shown right away. And these, these scanners actually are pretty good when it comes to, you know, if they are unable to identify the QR code, they will uh, put it in, in a different pocket or a different slot so that those can be validated by humans. Another component that we've created is the Enterprise Signing Authority. Um, this is a critical piece. We create certificate keys, a public-private key combination, before every, every election or from time to time, whether it's one year or two years as per the policy. And then those keys are distributed to all the system by hand, and we track where exactly these keys have gone. We use Iron Key as a USB device so that we have full control of, we can even delete that remotely in case of a breach. So a lot of measures and controls. Now, when it comes to components of open system, at a very high level, we wanted to work on the governance framework. How are we going to govern? As the VSAP, now it's been in use for two years. We are the pioneers. We wrote this. The intellectual property belongs to LA County. How are we going to govern? The code management, as you all know, code management is a big piece, and uh, we're going we're gonna to work on that. Infrastructure, of course, uh, whether that's in cloud or in-house, that's yet to be determined. But we would uh, seek some feedback from open source community about pros and cons. And licensing, frankly speaking, the lawyers uh, at LA County, they would work on the licensing mechanism whether we piggyback on the existing licenses in open source or uh, you know something else so that's something we are we are working with our council the comment is if you license it it's not open source i think it's i think there are legal ramifications uh, there are license agreements with the open source software as well. Whether that's Apache or MIT, whether it's copyright, copyleft, that's what I meant by that we are still trying to determine. So the next step is, of course, uh, we're going to work on the governance model. That's something we are working very diligently, very, very closely with Secretary of State. Um, yes. Yes. That is correct. Los Angeles County doesn't want to be a vendor. We are a public entity. This was never, we never mean to be a vendor. When VSAP, let me give you a uh, little bit history. When VSAP was conceptualized, we knew that we have antiquated systems. We knew that we have to modernize. And frankly speaking, when it comes to elections, the entire marketplace is kind of 
control, I shouldn't say control, but there is a vast majority of market which is owned by a handful of vendors, maybe a dozen or so. And frankly speaking, nobody could scale to our level. They are great for smaller counties, but LA County, and that's when we wanted to break this dependence from the vendors. We wanted to create something for our, ourselves. If it can work in LA County, it can work in any jurisdiction within the nation. And not whatever investments we have made for design and development, we want to give that back to the election community. So yes, you are right. Our intention is to give this system, this code, to the back to election community so that they can use it. And again, it doesn't have to be all or none. They can even take pick, pick and choose. They can take tabulation system, for example. They can still use their own ballot marking device or whatever devices they want to. We want to leave it open. And another benefit that we want to get from open source community is transparency and security. Frankly speaking, if there are more eyes on the code, it will be better and better, especially when it comes to security. So that's something we want to work with Secretary of State so that they can create certification and regulatory framework. And the open source community, in whatever way, if, if you all can reach out to uh, whoever you can and push for regulatory framework, definitely something uh, we, would, we would love to collaborate with you. Code management, versioning, again, a s relatively a simpler thing, but that's something we can, we can work on. Uh, whether we put the code in GitHub or not. There are several examples that we've looked at. Um, infrastructure goes with code management. Um, outreach and communication. We want to be very open and transparent. Whenever there's a new version of VSAP, uh, we want the community to know. We want our users to know, and we want all the jurisdictions that are going to be using the system to know that this is the new system, this is the enhancement. So there's got to be a communications protocol and a, uh, and a platform there. Security patches and vulnerabilities, I think that's a big one because imagine uh, one version of VSAP is certified by a Secretary of State in California. Let's say another county, let's say in Texas, wants to use it. Uh, Secretary of State is not their regulatory body and there is a vulnerability that is identified. How do we patch it? If it's right before the election, do we patch it right away? So there are some nuances. Again, not a, not a huge thing. It's not a big barrier, but these are nuances that everybody has to understand and consider. Remember, this is the first time in election industry something like this has been done. So we are actually breaking ground. So a lot of a lot of our community doesn't understand or sometimes they are not even ready. Um, sometimes people think that if we make it open source, uh, it's, it's uh, going to be more vulnerable to hacks and stuff. But my counter argument is that we have controls and measures in place. The fact that the, the entire system of ballot marking devices is isolated, contained in one physical location, that itself has some inherent security uh, built in. Licensing, as I said, that's another thing. Uh, what happens to the third party libraries? Because, frankly speaking, there are thousands of them. We built on top of, uh, of open source stack, but there are many libraries. These libraries come with, the, with their own licensing. Some are restrictive licensing and some are permissive. How can we, so frankly speaking, we have to probably scan through the entire code base and start identifying the libraries that we can ship as part of our open source uh, model. Or we may have to, to update our documentation. Some libraries may have their own licensing and their own terms and conditions that uh, the consumer may have to sign. Just to give you an example, if there's a arbitrarily, if, if MySQL is there, uh, there might be an agreement between MySQL and the, and the, and the user. They may have to uh, get into or at least agree to their terms and conditions. 
So there's, there's some work to be done. The system has worked for us. It's still in its early stages, I would say, two years right now. And we've had about uh, three or four major elections. Um, so I think the time is right. We want to go through and we want to make our software ready for open source. Yes, questions? So the question is, Secretary of State Shirley Weber, what are the concerns that she has? When I say Secretary of State, I do not mean the Secretary of State Shirley Weber. I mean the Office of the Secretary of State. They have a team. We work with them. They are certification authority. They have not told us if there are any concerns. And frankly speaking, we have gone through multiple levels of testing, penetration testing, third-party testing. We, we hired our own companies in addition to the certification bar that any voting system has to, has to meet. In fact, we raised our bar so much that the certification testing becomes a cakewalk. Um, so I would not say that the Secretary of State herself has any problems or issues because we don't interact with her directly. Her office, we are in touch with her office, and uh, we're just working uh, with them on the certification and the regulatory framework. Yes. So the question is, what type of measures and controls do we have for, um, during an election uh, for the tally system? We have several, I would say, more than a dozen or so different steps that we have to go through. Before every, every election, uh, the certified code, which is in a repository, in a trusted build, we call it trusted build, we have to reinstall the software from that trusted build, always. So imagine we keep conducting elections. After every election, we wipe out our production servers. We archive them, and we reinstall the software from a trusted build so that we are getting it from one source. There's a hash value verification. Are we indeed getting the same trusted build that's been certified or not? Once the system is installed, then we do a public logic and accuracy test. This is a public event where members of public and observers can come in and watch us do a logic and accuracy test. And logic and accuracy test is nothing but we go through each and every possible combination in a ballot. It just goes in millions and see if tally system has read each of them, each of those combinations correctly or not. And we, we test end-to-end -end the entire system. During an election, um, after all this testing, during an election, we keep scanning the ballots throughout the 11-day or 15-day period. On the election day itself, 8 o'clock, so by law, 8 o'clock is when we are supposed to tabulate the system, the, the ballots. 8 p.m. we tabulate, and then there's a frequent, frequency determined, you know, every two days or every three days, there's going to be regular updates, and that period is called canvas period. During the canvas period, we do 1% manual check of all the ballots, of all the contests, and again, it's a public event. Observers and campaigns are generally watching us. Campaigns will send their people who will be looking over our shoulders. And it's generally divided into a, a glass barrier so that people can watch us while we do our work. Once the election results are certified, we again do a public logic and accuracy test, the same test. And once everything is done, once the election is certified, 
then there's a period of I think 30 days or so when people can uh, can contend if the results are not accurate uh, the the campaigns come back to us sometimes sometimes they don't um, and then we do whatever is is legally allowed and then we wipe out the production servers before wiping out we archive everything into a storage and then get ready for the production server so it's it's a rather intense uh, activity from technology as well as from the operations but we make sure that uh, we are doing everything possible above and beyond what we are supposed to do legally yes uh, great question uh, do we have other jurisdictions that have in, uh, expressed interest the answer is yes um, there are many jurisdictions and you can imagine LA County being the largest in terms of population um, whatever we do gets highlighted very visible nationally and internationally so there are many jurisdictions within the US that have expressed interest they're just waiting for um, you know either get get a hold of the code or some jurisdictions basically just want to take our ballot marking devices the device that you will see downstairs um, some they just want to take our tally system some are only interested in learning about our operations and maybe take aspects from our operations any other question yes I would say it's uh, it's less than a dozen okay. ten or so yes and as as the things mature as the word goes out as the public trust is established in fact we are we've started seeing that uh, people trust our system so much that the the amount of questions that we were asked earlier three or four years ago the nature of the questions is, has changed the number of questions are becoming lesser and lesser so it just shows and then we get feedback from the public as well what do you want us to change the system is modular it's a living system we are continuing to change the system um, and the idea is public trust and transparency yes question great question something very near and dear to me so the question is uh, when you when you vote there's a QR code that gets printed on the ballot how as public member of a public how can you know what's contained in the QR code so we've made it all transparent the QR code contains and I can if, if there's a chance I can show you when the ballot gets printed if you are voting for Mickey Mouse or whoever there is a, there is a string associated with that value in the QR code that string is contained in the QR code you can use any scanner your camera phone camera or any scanner and understand what those values are we create a database before every election and we publish it what does 25 means? What does 49 means? What does 2FC mean? So that people can independently, on their own, verify what is in their QR code. In an instant, you can also, there is a human readable selections that you have made, whether it's in English or other languages, you can actually read what your ballot contains. So both from human readable as well as QR code, we are being fully transparent. I think there's a question here. There is never going to be a discrepancy. Human readable. Human readable. Human readable. So the law says the intent. What is the intent of the voter? Who are they intending to vote? And we, we see that in, in vote by mail. Uh, so there, there are 
rules and regulations around it. So yeah. Correct. Yeah. And that's why we test the system so much. I think there's a question at the end. Great question. Uh, uh, it was a two-part question. One is about the bug bounty uh, program. That is something we are working on. Uh, we've, as I said, we've uh, we've established a pretty well-defined cybersecurity program, and we work with a lot of agencies, including DHS at, at the federal level and at the state level, FBI, and even the third-party security companies as well. But bug bounty is definitely on the horizon, uh, something I cannot comment right now. When would it happen? But that's something we are considering. The second question was, there's no way for voters to know who they are registered as and who did they vote for. Um, I think that's a legal question uh, and the policymaker question. Unfortunately, I wouldn't be able to tell you. I'm a technologist. I make things, um, you know, uh, the democracy and how the voting happens in the United States or in California. Uh, there are laws. We merely follow the laws. So I think it's more of a, a policy question rather than... Imp uh, it's not the first time, uh, but I think... Uh, and I can understand both sides of the story. I can understand why things are the way they are. There needs to be a privacy. I mean, if I'm a voter, why does registrar need to know? Who did I vote for? I, I wouldn't be very comfortable letting anybody know. It's a very personal experience, right? In some other jurisdictions, in some other countries, it may happen. I cannot comment, but uh, again, we there, there are policy uh, questions. So. There's a question. So this is very exciting, and I really appreciate what you're doing. And I hope all of America follows this. But it, I, it, forgive me if, if I've misunderstood. It sounds like a lot of the software that you use is not currently open source, but it is your intention to open source. And so I, I'd like you to comment on that. And, and I'd also like to say that I, I believe there is some risk and delay here in not open sourcing um, quickly because of both. Uh, yes, the question is, uh, you know, if it's our intent, LA County's intent to make it open source, the answer is yes. That is why this was the prime philosophy behind VSAP. We wanted to break that dependence from the vendors because, frankly speaking, in, in vendor-supported system, there were a lot of flaws. Accessibility was something that was add-on. Security was something that was an afterthought. We didn't want that. We wanted... the in fact, the law says in a vote center, there should be one accessible device. All 100% of our devices are accessible. So, w I mean, that's, that's the kind of bar we are raising for ourselves. Um, you mentioned that uh, there's an inertia and we, that there, are, there are risks if we further delay it. Yes, you're right. I think, as I mentioned, that in 2020, 2020 was, had two major elections, the primary and the, and the presidential general. So 2020 was the first year when we rolled out for ourselves. We refined our processes. 
we made enhancements, we added some more languages. In 2021, we had a recall election. In 2022, uh, we just finished the gubernatorial uh, primary. So I think the time is ripe right now. Um, and we want to make it open source. It is, and again, for the, for the benefit of open source community, we want it to be fully transparent. We want people to, to audit our code. We have, uh, and that's the philosophy that we bring to the table. Even the, the transparency that I spoke to you about, that, that people can actually watch us, what we do, we want to be fully transparent. Can you comment on what you're waiting on then? So there are, as I said, multiple issues or items that we are working on. I think the governance and the regulatory framework would be, the, would be something big one that we would need Secretary of State to collaborate with us. Um, there are questions. This is something new that we are doing. This has never been done. It's a breakthrough. So I think the governments also need to mature and learn from the private industry and see what's going out there. There are several examples at the federal level. Uh, you know, open data, uh, for example. There's, there's nothing wrong with that, and I, I totally get it. I think, I, think I, I understand where you're coming from. Where we are coming from is we want to make sure that uh, all the regulatory bodies, they know exactly what we're doing. What are the repercussions? Um, once it's certified, another county takes a certified code. Um, do they do the certification testing, or do they do operational testing? Do they do a functional testing? Because in various aspects, it can be a same mirror of what we do. In many cases, it may be totally different. It may look very different for other counties. So yes, you're right, opening up of the source code. And as part of our certification testing, we have opened it up in a controlled manner to uh, much more scrutiny than any other voting system. The, the private entities, they don't, they don't do all that. But we went above and beyond. We invited DHS to do a critical product evaluation on our dime. We invited uh, two or three third party entities to do a security testing, vulnerability testing, penetration testing. Um, and all the, all the responses, all the feedback that we get, and, and again, software will have bugs, there will be security issues. And we are always trying to, uh, before any major version that we release and get certified, we're always addressing all the security bugs and all the vulnerabilities that are found. Yes?
there are multiple layers of uh, issues, and I'm, I'm sure we'll, we'll collaborate with the open source community and, and uh, move forward. Uh, that's our intention. Um, we don't want to hold back. It's just that these are certain gotchas and nuances that we are working on. And in government, as you know, uh, things take their time. But we, LA County, prides itself that we've done this work so fast. Within a I, I'm telling you, I was here in 2019 and 2018. We were still using the old Inca card, Inca vote and, uh, and the cards technology. Last question. Unfortunately, I think I will have time for one. And then maybe we can close out the session. And then I'll be hanging out here. If you have any questions, one on one, we can talk about it. Um, just one last. I'm sorry. I think I've had some questions. I think this gentleman wants to ask something. Yes. So the question is, has Secretary of State Office uh, expressed interest in, in publishing the code themselves for the rest of California? Uh, unfortunately, that's not the case. Secretary of State's Office has expressed interest that they want to make it open source. They want LA County to take the lead. Um, we are working. They are committed to creating a governance framework and certification framework. Um, but there hasn't been any conversation that they will publish. So I think th those are certain things that we are still working on with them. Uh, hopefully we, we come to a resolution and uh, we just um, make it available on GitHub.